Welcome to set three of the Automation Competizione Executive Car Challenge. We've got three fantastic cars to share today, so without further ado, let's begin. The Trinity by Chris is a performance entry into the contest. With a huge 478 horsepower engine, this car is a beast on the track, shooting from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in a colossal 4.6 seconds. This car is certainly in the realm of sports cars and receives 114 points in the sport category. The fat tyres are wrapped in a sport compound, enabling this car to attain 1.1 g-force around the bends. This is one of the sportiest cars I've seen in the contest so far. However, it does suffer from some real fuel economy issues, uh, attaining 22.9 litres per 100k. Let's see how it performs. Alright, here we are in the Trinity. Um, this thing is an absolute beast. It's a... Uh, it's a, you know, it's a real handful. Uh, it got up to 250k an hour like it was just, you know, moving through, you know, a vacuum. It was crazy. A very fast accelerating car. So let's just take it around town and see how it performs and how it looks in this uh, beautiful Italian landscape. So already this car has a lot of power. It's a very powerful monster. It's a very powerful car and it feels quite, quite racy. I mean, this car has got you know, some pretty sporty characteristics. 1.1G in the corner is a pretty impressive figure. I reckon this will be one of the contenders for the fastest around the track. Not that it actually counts for anything. Um, <laughs> but yeah, driving through here, it feels very agile. Feels absolutely fine. Let's give it a bit of gas, eh? Whoa. Very fast car, very fast car indeed. Probably a bit too fast for a banker. I feel like this car is more of a, uh, it's definitely more of a sports car than a sort of executive luxury car. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I mean, I appreciate all entries into this contest, so thank you very much. And uh, if you like making sport cars, well, I'm just, I'm happy to review them. I'm absolutely happy to review them. They just probably won't win because of the way that the stats are currently uh, being sort of calculated. Let's try and get a little jump here, eh? Shall we see what happens? Whee! Yeah, nice. Yeah, you could go pretty quick in this thing. I feel like if you were a banker and you were in need of being able to get away from some baddies, this would be one of the cars you'd want. Um, yeah, now this is the Trinity. The Trinity, the Trinity, the Trinity. Ah, oh, ESC. Damn ESC. I hate the ESC so much. Yeah, so this car, um, I mean, I, I, I like this car. Um, only problem with it is it's, I mean... It's not really a big sort of luxury barge. It's one of the issues, and also I'm not such a huge fan of some of the some of the um, characteristics of the looks. Um, I think it looks okay, but I don't think it's a five. I think it might just be a four, to be honest. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your entry, uh, and let's. I'm sure this car will come alive on the track, and that's really what this car is designed for. And I'm actually quite looking forward to that. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for your entry. The Orient LWS is a lightweight saloon car designed to create an entry-level price point for Mets owners to consider stepping up to the prestige brand of Orient. Making its debut in 1998, the LWS was crafted to strike a balance between luxury, performance and price, starting at $46,500. New owners were delighted to discover a well-built, luxurious interior combined with a solidly planted chassis and a powerful new Boxer 6, specifically designed by Mets for this new entry-level prestige vehicle. Ladies and gentlemen, the Orient LWS by the Quanto. Okay, so here we are in the Orient, a uh, slightly a very different uh, styling this thing's got a real sort of look of the mgb uh the mg roadster on the front uh, what's it like i think i think it's an mg roadster but it looks kind of like a ford uh, sort of cosworthy it's it's uh, quite aggressive looking i actually i like the look i think it's probably a bit oh i guess you could say it's probably you know probably early very early 2000s late 90s it's uh slightly more um sort of it's, it's got a different styling a bit more angular sort of boxy styling compared to the, t the previous two entries of this contest so far let's just drive it around town really nice and slowly and just see how it performs oh what sort of engine oh that turbo <laughs> that turbo's kicking in goodness me that's a very it's a very boy racery turbo i have to say it, it kicks in real oh, bit of scraping going around there at 20 k's an hour it kicks in this look at the turbo look at that thing it, that's not that many revs. 3,000 RPM, we're already getting like lots of boost. This thing is going to be an absolute handful on the track. I feel like you could just drive past people and just go like this and just like blow their like shirts and stuff off. So this car, um, 
The previous two cards I gave five around the tr around the sort of town. This thing is is a bit probably a bit more. I don't know what's the word that I'm looking for. This car doesn't go 270 kilometers an hour. Uh, I don't think, but it does. It, the handling is quite. It's got quite sporty suspension. And it does scrape quite a bit going around the corners. Yeah. Hmm. See, look at that. When I when I stand on the brakes there, if I take this jump, yeah, there's a lot of quite a bit of scraping action going on with this thing. It's just because the nose, I think, hangs hangs uh, hangs over the front quite a bit. I'm still gonna I'm still gonna give this a five for around town because it still performs really well around town, but I still wanna do this. Oh, oh, my my computer just glitched out. Oh, 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 oh! Ah! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. I just I don't know something about this car. I think it's just the look of it. It looks quite aggressive, quite angry. I feel like it wants to be driven aggressively. Yeah, it totally does. Woohoohoo! <laughs> yeah, mate! This thing uh, handles really well. It's quite agile for such a big car. Woohoohoohoo! Oh, I'm really on the limit here! <laughs> Nothing quite like Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that's that's too that's too high refs. Ah, it's a problem with this uh, luxury challenge. You can't get squeegee gearboxes. Wah! Okay, I think just based on the handling, this is going to be one one of my picks for the uh, for the contest. This feels really good around the road. <laughs> By Superior ninety eight. The Regal 6LT is a stately, comfortable, luxury commuter. With a well-designed Turbo 6, this car can speed along very nicely, reaching 270 km an hour. The rear multi-link suspension along with the direct injection ensure that the Regal lives up to its name in, in many categories. A well-designed and balanced entry into the luxury executive market, coming in at $48,700. Right, here we are in the Regal, so let's uh, start up that engine and uh, take it around town. Oh my goodness. This car. It's definitely smooth. Oh my goodness, you feel that? No, exactly. This car feels... It's quite, it's quite a quiet car, actually. Doesn't produce a whole lot of noise. Um, and it is extremely smooth. It doesn't feel um, bumpy at all around the corners. It feels really, really... Um, I don't know, it just feels a lot more luxury than uh, the previous car that I reviewed, which was a bit more racy. Um, but you can sort of, you get the, sort of get the sense in this that you're sort of wafting along a little bit more, just because the suspension is probably tuned a bit more for comfort than it is for sport. Um, which will make it a handful on the track, because there's nothing quite like a big luxury barge around a racetrack. <laughs> but then that's what I asked for. That, 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 was, that, that kind of is what the challenge is about, and I've got no doubt that this will score quite highly. Uh, because I can tell right now that it feels, it feels kind of more like a Phantom and less like a, I don't know, S S4 or like a, like a performance uh, performance luxury car. Interesting. I wonder how well it'll go around the track actually. It seems to grip quite well. Hmm. Absolutely no issues with uh, ground clearance there. I took that uh, that we bump there quite intensely, and uh, it responded really well. Scraped a little bit there, but that was because I was going way too fast. Let's just take these couple of bends here, and oh my goodness, this car is very, very poised, very controlled. Right, so. Oh, this car. Um, what I like about it is it looks super realistic. I mean, look at it. It's um, that sort of front end. It's kind of this weird hybrid mix of sort of, of various. Uh, it's it's quite unique. It looks quite unique, and I quite like it. It's very modern looking, and I love the top, the, the the rims on this thing. 
Um, the way that they've been constructed with the black on the outside and the sort of the silver on the inside, they look fantastic. Uh, this car really, um, for me, is is a five for aesthetics. I'm going to give it a five for aesthetics because I think it looks very much um, sort of within the pr- pr- sort of parameters of what you'd expect from this this uh, this contest. So, yeah, the Regal. I think it looks regal. It drives regal. It is regal. Good car. Right, here we are in the Orient. Uh, this thing, oh, I really like this thing. And the look of it just is growing on me and growing on me like a like a pustule or something. Right, let's uh, take off the ESC and uh, take it up to speed and see how fast it goes around the top gear test track or how many times it takes. Here we go, into drive. And then it's sport. 1.1 bar of boost straight away. Look at that thing, insane. I tell you what, this thing, uh, it's got really good acceleration might not hit that 100k an hour mark oh it feels planted oh my goodness it's got heaps of traction what the heck this has way more traction than i was expecting i mean no it doesn't really because i drove it in town but wow maybe it's because i'm not going as fast i don't know but whatever it is i really do like it I mean, take note of the G meter down there. Um, let's see how fast, how we can get through here. Damper brakes and then through. Not too much. Let's go full power now. Full power now. Not too much. Not too much. Oh, I may have messed it up. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Didn't quite get my line through there. Yeah, that was almost. Yeah, that was one G. Wow! Look at those. Look at those G meters. Look at those G meters. Damn. This is my first time driving this track in this car. It feels planted, and uh, the brakes, the brakes are great. Cut the corner there quite considerably. Little dab of brakes here, throw it in, hit that apex, and then and across the line. That was fun, that was a fun car to drive. I mean, it's got some race, racy, racy suspension on it. I suspect it'll get, um, pretty heavily penalized uh, in the automation scorings, but man, it feels good to drive that car. Thank you very much. All right, here we are in the Trinity S4 of the Top Gear Test Track, so uh, let's turn off the ESC and see how fast we can, or uh, well, how many times it takes us to get a lap around this thing. Here we go. And off the line. Man, this thing is fast. Woohoo! It's here at 104 seconds or something. It's crazy. Steering's got very little feel. Not a whole lot of force feedback coming through. Oh, 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 under braking, very unstable. That rear is popping out. It feels like there's quite a bit of a rear brake balance there. And then popping up to this uh, slow speed corner, braking hard, and just remembering not to turn too much under braking. This thing's got a lot of rear bias, which is causing some uh, pretty mega stability issues under braking. Um, I feel like if you're a rich banker, you might struggle with that somewhat. Up to 170 on the straightaway, that's pretty good. And braking hard. Easing off the brakes, replacing it with some throttle. Oh man. Woohoo! This thing has got traction. It's fast too. Man, it's fast. I wonder how fast this thing will get up to uh, after the second follow through. Oh, we're sideways. We are sideways. And we are just off the track. <laughs> Damn, this is my first ever attempt to, at, at a lap in this car. So, as you can see, it's going pretty well it's uh, super racy it's got that 1.1 g-force uh, and braking hard man this thing is racy racy uh, racy tuned and oh, across the line and that's the first time lap right there um, as I predicted the Trinity s4 is a beast on the track right so this is the third attempt to at the Regal this thing is um, really struggling around the track, um, if I'm honest. Um, it is, <laughs> I mean, I, th I think this car is it's so far ahead on the points leaderboard anyway because of its, um, oh man, I just have to balance it a lot there before it picks up. There's the first corner and the Regal. And that sort of seems to be the way that this car is uh, designed to operate and hard on the brakes, not turning too much. Oh man, yeah. The other two entries currently that are being timed with this car, I've got like sport uh, tires and stuff. I don't think this thing has got sport tires, uh, which is something. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I almost respect this car 
even more just because it's so um, it feels kind of like a you know, big luxury car I mean it is a big luxury car what am I talking about oh coming out of the corner the torque from that turbo is um, pretty immense feels good I have a little tab of brake here and in tires squealing there it's actually quite fast in a straight line though, I'll tell you what. Tapping the inside. Didn't like that. Oh, that's no, fine. It actually it gives all the bumps really well. Now we're going to have to brake a little harder here. Just to get the regal in. <laughs> now just bear in mind with these lap times that I'm doing with these things. Like, if I took six or seven laps, I'd probably get a little lot better. Oh, there we go, and across the line. Alright, so that was my third attempt at a lap. So, five, four, three. So, this gets three points for lapping around the Top Gear test track. Ladies and gentlemen, the Regal. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to break. Oh, super early with this thing. It's just got so much oversteer into the corner. I mean, I suppose we can still have that, can't we? Can't we? No, 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 no. The banker's wife has just vomited in the back seat. Right, so the scores have been tallied, and the Orient received 87.46, the Trinity received 81.02, and the Regal received a colossal 94.64, uh, primarily because it was just so well uh, tuned for the demographic score. Uh, obviously, that's got a lot of waiting on it. I did that intentionally, so that wasn't always up to me. It was mostly up to the scoring system, which means that... In first place, we still have the Mondo UTS, followed closely by the Regal 6LT. Uh, then we've got the Skykin, the Orient, the Hydeu, the Trinity, the Brinkwood, the Bossman, and then the Freedom at the bottom. So yeah, uh, fantastic cars, all of them, and thank you so much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.